Hello and welcome to the Vision of Science YouTube channel, the channel where you get to see all the things I can't. So in today's video I figured I'd do a follow-up to my dust extraction video I did earlier. So I showed off how I actually have the system set up in my workshop and now I figured I'd actually have a go over how to make things as efficient and as cheap as possible. Previously then I had a solid pipe here, which I showed in my previous video, uh, and I said I was going to swap it out for some flexi. So I've got this in here. This is not what I'll be using. I actually put this in as an example of how you shouldn't do it. So for one, this um, also has a lot of excess on it. So as it builds, as, as it's going, there's a lot of uh, air reduction in it. But main reason you don't want this, like this, is as the dust chippings come through, eventually they start getting stuck and start weighing it down. And as it gets weighed down, the suction reduces and there's more and more builds up until that is down, down here, filled up with dust. So if you're gonna have something like this, you want it to be as short as possible, which is the absolute minimum you can go to keep the airflow as strong as possible and stop it from building up with dust and being weighed down. Swapped it over now, so as you can see here, I've got a very short, flexible pipe so that um, if there is any build-up, it's not going to pull it down very far. If I manually pull it down, that's all it's going to get. So there's not going to be too much of a reduction uh, in the suction power. Um, this is a 5-inch flexi I've got here with a 4-inch solid at the top. I've gone 5-inch here to try and limit the reduction from going with the flexi. So it should help negate it. Um, the other thing is, uh, as to why I've done this, in case you missed it in the previous video, having flexible here instead of solid prevents me from damaging the rest of the ducting if I ever need to move the extractor for any reason. Um, in fact, when I took the solid off, I ended up breaking the um, blast gate at the top um, because of just how stiff everything was. So a short amount of flexi makes things a lot more manageable from a maintenance point of view. Next up then, I figured we'd go over the reducers. So I've got three different types here. Uh, I've got two 100mm to 125mm and then I've got this one here which is a 50mm to 100mm. Um, I would, would have done the three of the same but uh, I don't have the one type in 20, 125 mil, so use what we've got. So this one here is made out of metal and it's got these rubber seals on it. This thing, you can get a good clamp on it um, without worrying about breaking anything and it's got the good angles, so suction through it is good. Downside, I think these cost about £28 each, um, not including delivery, so you pay quite a lot for them. When it comes to going into the, the actual piping and the connectors, because it's got that rubber seal, they once they're in, I don't, I don't like taking them out. They're, they're really hard to remove, so it's like once it's set up, you want to leave it on. Um, next up here, this is a ABS plastic. This is the normal um, dust extraction reducer. Um, so, see here, I don't know if you, you've got a angle there. Um, to try and help with the uh, the change in suction. With these, if you try and crush it, it has a slight bit of flex, um, but you're still, you're gonna be really silly if you're gonna break that, um, trying to tighten it with your, uh, your cable clamps. Um, so yeah, these tend to be about seven pound each, depending on uh, which ones you go for. Um, yeah, the, these tend to go fit into the, the cuffs pretty easy without any um, anything needing doing. So that and this, you know, this is a one twenty five mil to hundred mil again. This is a normal household ventilation reducer. Um, it has a slight step there. Um, it's quite thin. As you can see, it's quite flexible. Reason I've decided to try this, however, is. Um, these are about £1.30 each. I was like, uh, it's going to be terrible. But it's better 
than the ABS version because the ones I could find instead of having this angle here it's flat so there was no taper in it so it's just straight uh, 100 mil to 125 um, without the angle which makes a huge difference um, problems with this then of going cheap obviously you put the clamp on you have you can only go to a certain amount so you can over tighten these and it will start to um, uh, crimp it um, but from what I found it, it's not a problem it's pretty good um, you also will need to you see you've got a bit of duct tape on here for your, uh, your cuffs um, that's just so it goes in nicely you can get it again when I got this in it was a pain in the butt to get it back out again which is what you want um, so yeah it's down to personal preference I'm actually for my 125 mils going to be using these um, for any new ones I get because I mean it's not like I'm yanking and pulling it all over the place it's the ten everything tends to be stationary so I don't see the problem um, so yeah it can be quite a big saving there because um, otherwise if I want the, the angle bit it would have been going for the 28 pound ones so again something to consider you can still use household ducting ones you've just got to be more careful with them an important lifeline to have when it comes to the ducting um, may come as a shock to some people but it's this right here duct tape I know I know um, you know not really what people think of using duct tape for but it helps a lot so if you've got things like whoop, this here this tends to be quite loose in the joins and wobbles a lot so I just um, get some duct tape wrap around it until it gives a good tight seal and then pop it in um, and in some cases when I'm using the household ducting I'd wrap it around the outside as well it also helps if you've got any uh, little leaks um, and things so yeah definitely you always want to have duct tape to hand it just makes life so much easier over at the grind box then uh, if you've been watching the channel you'll see I've upgraded it again 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 so as you can see on here I've been using just again normal household ducting for ventilation um, normally this isn't something you're recommended to do because the pipes can collapse from the um, the power of the extractors but the only time it will collapse is if you have a blast gate on the other side actually closed then you'll get it collapsing if it's all completely op always open though that's not something you have to worry about other problems with this however are it's not a problem for me but for uh, other people in the workshop this is white you can't see through it whereas the normal ducting um, is clear so if there's a blockage at any point you can um, see it and sort it out uh, pretty quickly um, but for something like this it's fine it's only a short amount and it makes it a lot easier to uh, attach the flexible ducting to another point is on this part here as you can see, I've got a T-joint these are generally speaking terrible for keeping the suction high so where it goes out straight on the opposite side of this it gets a lot of suction that, that gets a high amount where it goes off and round again uh, that does still get suction but nowhere near as high it's fine for the dust but I found any bark bits or big pieces they tend to get stuck in the pipe so in this in this case to try and keep it the same that's where you'd get a, a Y splitter instead so it goes out at a 45 degree angle um, th that's a lot easier but for, for me on this I don't need that because I'm directly firing all the big bits into this part of the grinder box anyway and that part is just to catch any dust stop it coming out that side so that's uh, that's it for that then so still in relation to the grinder box then I forget to go on again about flexible ducting and getting the lengths right so originally I had a 3 meter and 4 meter long air pipe connected to the grinder box and what ended up happening was the chippings all ended up clogging in the pipe over time 
because the pipe was going down to the floor and then back up again to the extractor, um, the suction was reduced and then eventually it just cut out altogether due to the amount of um, bits that had clogged the pipe. So now I've swapped from this this long one here to the short one. So I'm sure you can imagine this is the three meter pipe. Originally there was a four meter, but that's been chopped up now. So I'm sure you can imagine the amount of excess there was on the piping. Whereas this, this when it's actually attached now, doesn't go anywhere near the floor. It stays straight up to the extractor itself. So there's no sagging happening and everything is pulled in regardless of how big it is. So again, get your ducting right, try and keep it so there's no bends or kinks in it and as short as possible. On to possible safety with these now. So one thing when it came to extraction that I um, had a lot of people go on about was static. Uh, static build up on all the plastic piping and how you need to do everything you can to prevent it. When I first built the extraction system, I was looking at getting um, the anti-static kits, basically wrapping copper wire all around the piping or putting it through the system itself, um, putting nails through it all, or what I was thinking of was metal blast gates and earthing them out. I've since gone with nothing. Um, and I haven't actually had any problems with static piping per se. The main time I've actually felt any static build up is when using the thickness planer. Um, using that uh, for two hours straight, um, the pipe got a little bit staticky, but not enough to, oh, I'm going to um, fry a few things from touching it. Um, so yeah, it, it's, I personally haven't had any problems with static at all. The flexi, uh, it's the four inch flexi that was getting it. Um, the actual plastic static ducting, ugh. the solid ducting, there we go, um, doesn't it didn't seem to be building up anything. So I don't personally think it's something you need to worry about. Uh, and I've been using, obviously I've got the Lincoln uh, two foot um, bandsaw. Um, I've got the 22 inch uh, drum sander and then the, uh, the big uh, thickness planer. So I've got chippings and fine dust and I'm not really having any problems with it. So it's up to, it's personal preference that one. If you want to try and uh, prevent it, then you can. But for me, I just haven't had a problem with it. So now we're at the lathe then for the final part of this. So when it comes to lathe, obviously they make quite a lot of dust. So for that, I decided to buy this here, the Big Mouth Dust Hood. My first initial thing when I bought these, this was, it's basically like having a giant hoover, you know, big area. Uh, it's gonna keep the air clear around me and everything's just gonna be pulled into it. It's not how these work. This is more of a hopper than a, um, a vacuum. So it's got a wide area to catch bits that go into it, but it's not going to completely clear the area around you. Um, so you're still, it's still useful having something like this for the lathe, but you still need air filtration or a dust mask because um, it's not going to keep the whole area clear for you. Um, it's a key important thing because again, the area that it's spread out around um, reduces the actual suction drastically. So anything that goes within this box is gonna get uh, pulled in, but anything further away from it, it's not re really gonna catch it. It's a very key important thing to remember when um, setting up your dust extraction. At the extractor again then. So a note, when you first set up your um, system, uh, what I found was a good idea was to close all the blast gates and then turn the system on. This is good for two things. One, um, as all the blast gates are closed, there'll be a lot of pressure on the system, which tends to pull all the ducting in tight. Um, so make sure the seals are good. And then if you leave it on and then go over all the joints and seals in the system, it's prime time for you to test if there's any leaks in it so you can then adjust it. For example, some duct 
piping might be a little loose, so you might just need to put a bit of duct tape around to um, take that out. So, nice quick thing to do, um, as long as you're not using the uh, normal house ducting, um, your ABS piping or your metal ducting, if you're uh, going uh, really over the top, um, should do it pretty nicely. Um, hopefully you found uh, these tips helpful. I'll uh, try and come up with any other things uh, along the way. I um, might do one on blast gates. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask below. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out the website visionlessdesigns.com where you'll find all my products I sell to help support the channel as well as links to my social media and Etsy store. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in future videos. Oh, hang on a second. No, I won't be able to see you, but you can see me.